Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the greatest show on earth. I am your co-host, Caleb Griffin. I'm your other co-host, Evan Lytle. And it's time to talk about some new stuff. So cue the theme song. Also, Evan, I have a surprise for you. Oh boy. Me and you will not be doing today's episode alone. <gasps> what does that mean? It means we have a special guest. Oh boy. Ladies and I gentlemen, wonder who it could be. from the Peach Crisp Show and Caleb AM, Caleb Ladd. It's me. It's Caleb Ladd. <sighs> Caleb Ladd will be joining us today. Evan! Caleb Ladd! <laughs> this is so exciting. This is the second time you've been on the show. Mm -hmm. First time you've been on the video show. This is new. Yeah. And we're excited to have you. So thank you for being here, Caleb. I'm so excited to be here. We're very Um, excited to have you here. Absolutely. Mm. So a lot of good stuff to talk about. And one okay thing to talk about, I guess. Bad thing, mid thing, however you want to describe it. New She-Hulk episode came out today. And Mm -hmm. me personally... I think it was the best episode that She-Hulk has had so far, but it's still sad that this was the best episode that they've had so far. Um, I love Outside of the wedding scenes, I thought the rest of the show was pretty good, but the wedding scenes were just so awful to me that... They were horrible, and I'd have was, to disagree. This might be my least favorite episode yeah, so far, Caleb hated and I really hated the whole show, so... Yeah. It... I hated that they started it off with a little joke about how, like, isn't it so inconvenient that there's a wedding episode halfway through the season? Because, one, nothing important has happened, so I don't really care that there's a wedding episode halfway through the season. But, again, I did want to see Daredevil, because they teased him at the end of episode five, and then we just don't see him in this one. And then, like, the wedding's stuff was just so boring it was bad it didn't make sense like her friend's a douchebag and she just stays like if i went to my high school friend's wedding and they were treating me like trash the whole time i would have no obligation to stay i would leave evan how did you feel about the episode i thought it was all right i mean when i texted you earlier i was like it feels like the perfect definition of mid like there's nothing grand about it but it's not like gosh awful like a garbage fire so this is kind of, and then I'll, and then they knew what they were doing. They're like, "Oh, isn't it so inconvenient?" Because we just showed you Daredevil's helmet. But you know what? The we're only reason show you this, people watch the show. It's true. Yeah, we're just going to show you this useless wedding episode. But yeah. at the end, they they kind of set up a plot, but they yeah. have like three episodes left. Six, six episodes episode in, six. they set up a plot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we finally get. I mean, something important. If you think about it, the writers and the people at Marvel working on She Hulk are kind of genius because. They teased Daredevil in the first trailer, so we keep watching because they knew the show was going to be bad. And mm-hmm. it's clear that they knew. Yeah, because the only reason I'm watching is Daredevil. Literally. So, but I think that's it's, another... I think it's going to be like episode nine. It probably will. I'm be. calling it. Yeah. Watch it just be like at the end of episode nine. It's just going to like drop down and be like, "I'm Daredevil." And well, then... we know there's two scenes at least. We know there's one of him in a suit and one of him as Matt Murdock. But that's all we know based on what's been released. But anyways, let's get to the good stuff, the stuff that we actually care about, the stuff that has given me hope again in Star Wars. What are are you talking about? You don't know what I'm talking about? It's Andor. Oh, my gosh. Andor? Andor what? Just Andor. Oh, Andor. Andor. Okay, okay. Just the show name Andor. Um, The Andorian. Andor. (laughs) Bro. (laughs) Dude. We got three episodes released yesterday, and it was kind of a shock because we knew the show was releasing yesterday, but I don't think many mm-hmm. people or I don't think anybody really knew outside of Disney employees that we were going to get three episodes. I didn't. And I'm glad we did because the third episode kind of wraps up like one and two and puts them yeah. together. 
to get ready for the rest of the show. Dude, this show is great so far. It is like yeah. up there with The Mandalorian for me. Mm-hmm. It's not as good. I'm not saying it's as good as The Mandalorian so far, but it's up there. And it's given me hope in Star Wars again because Obi-Wan and Boba Fett were just bad. Yeah. And we got a good show. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I really after you, after you, you're the uh, guest. Thank you, you're so sweet. No, we watched episode one and two last night, and then y'all were trying to get me to watch three, but I had stuff going on, so I didn't. And then I saw Caleb in the union today watching episode three, and I missed like the first minute or probably yeah. like 30 seconds, honestly. And so we watched it. And like after one and two, I was like, that was awesome. I yeah. want more of this. And then all of episode three, I was like, this Dude. is some of the best Star Wars content I've seen. Episode in ages. three was so incredible. It was man. awesome. It was, oh my goodness. Evan, how did you feel about everything we've seen so far? Every uh every episode for me has scored really high on like my personal out of 10 scale. Uh, because there's I mean the backstory is not super clear, but at the same time, it is. Like, you can't really understand, it, like, what he's going through because, like, you don't understand uh, whatever his race is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, but like, you, it's kind of like you pick up on everything because you're watching it. Uh, and then when it cuts to, like, modern day, it's done really well. I kind of like the, the spy-like theme and, like, the almost thriller-like. Like, they're getting hunted and they're trying to avoid stuff and like they can constantly come up with all these lies and you're like whoa they're just like at first it kind of confused me i was like oh i know what they're doing we're trying to like make up excuses for when you know stuff hits the fan and so uh and then just the characters are done really well i like all the characters uh and it's just i never would have expected a background story for andor and i didn't really know what i was getting into when it was coming out but i'm enjoying it yeah and episode three was probably my favorite because it it's when the the plots start to blend yeah and you get an awesome escape scene that was like oh, the coolest it was, thing it was I've seen. so incredible man and when it's, when the ahead. guy's like what I don't, I don't remember his name it was like luther or something like that he what he's like rule number two yeah plan your exit when you get there or something like that and then he just like blows up the entire building dude that's <laughs> sick it's like with his is his name Luther or Lethor? It's something like that. I looked it up earlier. Um, but for one of the few times in Star Wars history, like we know a lot of people are scared of the Empire. We know nobody really likes the Empire, but we've never really seen Le- Luthen. Luthen. We've never really seen like pure absolute hatred. Like we've seen it a little bit, but mm-hmm. not like that. Where this dude was basically like all we see the Empire do is tell people to move, go, and like. And he like addresses that as like, I'm tired of being told, move, go. Don't you want to fight these guys for real? Like, you could just yeah. feel his hatred towards the Empire. And it's kind of like one of the few times we've gotten that yeah. in Star Wars. And it's like shows like this is how the rebellion's getting started. And it's really awesome. And mm-hmm. oh, I'm just so excited for the rest of the show, man. Yeah, I don't know if that one guy is going to be like the main villain or anything. The dude that yeah. they like capture and all that. But the inspector, yeah, yeah, I really like him so far because, mm-hmm. like, at first I thought he was a little weasel. I was like, "Come on, man, your boss is telling you not to worry about it." But I was like, honestly, it's 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 kind of cool to see a villain that's like, you know, he's he's literally told like, "No, that's stupid, don't do it," and he's just like, out of spite, like he's just yeah. mad at him. He's like, "No, I'm gonna go kill this guy." It's literally like fails. it's literally like. This isn't a big name guy in the empire. He's no, this just, is literally just a dude. It's a, it's a dude. He's a way low rank, and that's what I like about it. It's not a character that has to have this huge like impact in the universe. It's just a guy, yeah. and that's like the whole point of the show. It's ordinary people in the galaxy, which is why so far it's very very good. Yeah, yeah. Evan. I really like it because it's like the the branch of the empire that they're working at is just like it's like police like they're they're not they're not fully armored or anything he's literally called an inspector he has like his SWAT team but yeah I thought it was just so funny because they're like these two guys were literally nobody he just killed them 
you know, they must have been picking a fight. We'll make up an excuse. We'll turn it in paperwork off our back. And this guy's like, well, no, it's wrong. These are our men. And he ends up going and gets more of his men killed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, this guy does not, yeah. he doesn't know what he's doing. You should <laughs> probably stop, like, bro. Yeah. You know, and another like aspect of that is like, we've always seen the rebellion as like good guys. Like they're only going to kill in like self-defense and even then they try not to Mm -hmm. here we Mm -hmm. see this guy and andor literally like causing someone to kill himself to like aid to their escape not eat like yeah literally like and blowing up like andor's own town like you know Mm -hmm. there were casualties outside of the police officers in that and that's like you know goes to show like how serious they are about this and that they're like tired and fed up with the empire and i love that because it's finally showing like the darker side of the rebellion, which has to exist. Yeah, that's one of with them. One of the problems I always have with Star Wars is that like it gets to the point where it's just too kitty for what is happening. Yeah. Like it's a massive multi planet scale war. And it's just like little Jedi's running around like, We love peace. Let's keep everyone safe. <laughs> it's like, shut up, please. Like yeah. in the first episode, a lot of the stuff that I've wanted to happen, I like said i hope this happens and then it happens and when andor oh, cassian is like he's like getting beat up by the thugs and he accidentally kills one of them i'm like kill the other one and kill the other one and then he just shoots him in the face i was like that was sick that was awesome yeah. so that was cool i like yeah, that was cool the whole show like the action's done very well the right there's been like a couple of jokes in there mm-hmm. and they were both funny so like and i don't want there to be like hardly any comedy in it I don't care if there's comedy in it or not. It doesn't need comedy at all. But the two times they did it, it was actually funny. Mm-hmm. Like it, in the battle scene, it was funny when like they blow up, blew up one of the speeders, and then you just see them going yeah. to the other speeders. They just pull it's around. Like, it's, bro. It, episode three was just so insanely good, and it just wrapped up his backstory and where he currently is. And oh my gosh, it's like it's almost like Rogue One all over again. Like yeah. mm-hmm. a story we don't know much about, but it's just better than most things Star Wars has done, if that makes sense. Very true. Yep. Episode three was definitely my favorite yeah, so far. I agree. Episode one was like a nine, two was like eight point five. And then three was close to a ten. Three was like, a ten for me. I didn't have any problems yep. with it. Yeah, it probably yeah. was. It was so good. Three was a ten for me, and I think one was probably it was maybe around 8.5 or 9 just because, I mean, I was getting used to it. Uh, and, like, I was trying to figure out what the plot was, which doesn't really, like, knock any points severely off because, like, it's going to explain it throughout the show. Um, but it was very startling when, like, he's like, we can we can turn ourselves in. We have this excuse. And he just, like, shoots him in the face. I'm like, that's like, – heroes don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> this is Star Wars. <laughs> I mean, I was like, wow, this is this sets a whole new theme. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, two was really good. It was like there wasn't really much like action wise, really. I mean, not yeah, I wouldn't yeah. say there was much. Uh, but it still continued the plot, so it was also around nine area. And then three was just a ten out of ten for me. Yeah. It was awesome. It's you know, I'm with and the thing is it makes me want to know more because I want to know like how do mm-hmm. Andor and Bix know each other mm-hmm. so well? Like, yep. what is this relationship and where did it come from? Like, and obviously Andor is leaving Ferrix with Luthen, mm-hmm. and Bix is still there, and her boyfriend is now dead. So what is? Yeah, I was so happy. I was like, yeah, he was the one character <laughs> I wasn't crazy about in yeah. the show. And well, because he turns Andor in, like, what yeah. a jerk. I know, yeah. right? Because he's jealous, and I was like, "Oh, dude, he's yep. jealous," him. and and he's literally sleeping with the girl. Literally, like and he's just like, "No, please don't talk to other boys. It makes me self conscious." And you know, and, and it's also, his it's, shot. yeah, it also shows like once again, kind of like a darker side of Star Wars. Because as much as we've seen the Empire or like stormtroopers throw people around, we've never seen an officer kind of slam someone up against a brick mm-hmm. wall repeatedly until. Yeah, she's her like face was out of the face, and then like, he walks up like Tim, I think his name was, with two men. Yeah, Tim. Um, he walks up, and they're like the one, like he looks like the leader of that squadron. He's yeah. like, "Stop! Don't move any closer, or whatever." And then he starts running at him, and then the dude behind him shoots him, and then the guy was like, 
give me your rifle, go back. Like, he, like, kicked him out of the squadron, yeah. essentially, for killing the dude, but he still killed him. Yeah, it's just, yep. it's a better Star Wars to me, because, like, it's actually, you know, people are hitting their shots yeah. on people, they're not really <laughs> missing, um, and it's just, well, like, you... except when it was, like, the two of them, and they're, like, standing, and the shot goes right in between them, I was yeah. like, man. Besides that one part, but, like, it's actually, like, it's what Star Wars, I'm not saying I have problems with, like, the original trilogy, but it's what... I think this could have made a better, a more kind of like grown up, mm -hmm. I guess, perspective where, you know, people actually die. There's casualties of war. And I think that's what made Rogue One so great to me was that, you know, it showed like people had to sacrifice their lives for a small chance at a rebellion victory. Like yeah. they got blown up by the Death Star just to get show the weakness of the Death Star to the rebellion. Like it was a big, a big deal. And that's. I mean, this just keeps playing on that theme. Like, you know, people have to die in a war. Like, and I'm very curious about Luthen. Like, oh yeah, my gosh, I'm he's so that. interesting. And I want to yeah. know what he's about. Me too. I think it's the the boost of life that Star Wars needs after Kenobi. And Kenobi didn't like not pull in any audience views because everybody was watching it because it was Ewan McGregor and he's returning as Obi Wan Kenobi. Right. But, I mean, for majority of people that I've talked to, they weren't really, like, pleased with it. They are just kind of like, oh, you know, that's cool. But, like, and or everyone that I've talked to that's seen it is like, this show is awesome. So, I think it's the new little – yeah, I think it's the new direction and just, like, a new story that really provides the Star Wars franchise with some, like, fresher content. Yeah, yeah which they desperately need. Like, mm -hmm. it kind of reminds me, last when we were watching it yesterday – Daniel had didn't know who Andor was. Like he thought it was a new character for this show. Like we had to explain to him, like this is the guy from Rogue One. He's like, I, I, I remember the girl. I don't remember the guy. And um, but like that's the thing. He's not that huge popular character. Like Star actual Star Wars fans right. know who he is, but he's not a huge popular character. Like everyone, whether you like Star Wars or not, you know who Obi Wan Kenobi and Darth Vader are. Yeah, that brings the hype around the show, and the show was bad. Like. Because there's and with Andor, there's not this huge story you have to mess up. When we talked about when Andor was first announced, I said the only way the show could really get ruined is if they somehow made it to where he survived the planet he was on blowing up. Yeah. And they're not doing that because that would ruin his story. Um, so there's a lot more space to be creative with it. And start the writers and directors of this show are doing a great job of that because this plot is so intriguing and the way they like did the episodes like i'm glad they released three at once because it was just episode one i wouldn't be like near as excited. excited because i'd be like really really confused as to what's going on now i'm like i get it and now i'm excited because where is this going to lead like and we know it's going to end up with him dying eventually like we know how a story is but it was the same with obi-wan we knew he was going to die eventually but andor is better and so far so far and i don't see it getting worse than obi-wan because obi-wan there was one good like one fantastic fight scene and everything else pretty much sucked but yeah i think star wars is at its peak when it's not really telling the main story mm -hmm. that's why the mandalorian is so good and why a lot of the clone wars is like peak star wars yeah i mean obviously episode five is my favorite like star wars movie followed very closely by rogue one i'll say like i love rogue one but I just think when Star Wars isn't trying to talk about how important the Skywalker family is and how awesome the Force is, like you can just do so much cool stuff with it. Mm -hmm. And that's why mm -hmm. I think that these shows excel when something like Obi-Wan that's telling like arguably the main character in Star Wars story. Like, yeah. I mean, Luke, I guess, but Obi-Wan's in more stuff, so... I guess now yep. it's not since Luke's in all of the eight, seven, nine. seven, eight, nine. Yeah. But yeah, I, we get what you're saying. We get it. We get it. I think episode three, just another little note on it. The reason it scored so high was like they had some beautiful shots in that. Like when he's yeah. a kid and they like go to the crash site and it's just kind of like him on the clearing and he's looking mm -hmm. down. And he has like the staff. It just it made me think of like Horizon or some other video game. I was just like, that's a beautiful shot like it just looks cool and then there was there was another one i can't think of what it, where it was but i was like man this cinematography is just like 
it's actually worth noting yeah yeah for sure it's it's definitely well made i mean Mm -hmm. it's just i'm so excited for star wars again like I was excited like the days leading up to Obi Wan, and then after two weeks, I was like, "Oh my gosh, this is bad." And now, and I wasn't near as like I was excited for Andor, right? But not near as excited as I was for Obi Wan. And now we're through three episodes of Andor, and I'm like itching for next week to get here because I want to see Episode Four so bad. Yeah. Like, and the last piece of great like I'd say nerd content, I guess that I've gotten was No Way Home. I thought. Oh, you mean in general? In general, not came out a while ago. Yeah, but in it was a while ago. That's what I mean. Like in general, like it's been the one great piece of nerd content we've gotten. I thought Thor: Love and Thunder was good. I thought the Batman was fine. I know you two think the Batman. I love the Batman. That was just me. For me, since No Way Home, this is the best piece of nerd content we've gotten because this is great, right? Mm -hmm. Is this and since this is the first, this is the greatest nerd content we've gotten in 2022, and. At least in my opinion, it is like unless you count the boys. I don't because I haven't seen <laughs> it. But I freaking love this show so far. And gosh, I'm just happy again because She Hulk's been a disappointment. Phase four has been such a disappointment all the all the way around. Other Star Wars stuff like Obi Wan and Boba Fett. Boba Fett was last year, but Obi Wan has been such a huge disappointment. Like this is I'm happy again. It's fresh it, and new. Yeah. And they're doing more than telling a boring story that nobody cares about. Right. Like mm-hmm. four, five, and six episodes four, five, and six, the original trilogy, were so great because it was a new story, right? We have that story now. Like, stop trying to make more of it when you don't need to. Make fresh stories that can take place in that time. You know, I know like the Skywalker saga technically ended with episode nine, but you don't have to leave the Skywalker saga to have great stories. Mm-hmm. You can have stories within it, just with characters that aren't Palpatines and Skywalkers. Like and it's Fallen pretty, Order. Yeah. Mandalorian. Yeah. For sure. I'm excited for Mandalorian season three. I am Dude, as well. It looks so good. I'm so excited. Oh my gosh. Star Wars is passing the MCU right now just because of Andor and the Mandalorian. <laughs> oh man. But yeah, I'm yeah. excited for the future of Star Wars right now. Uh, Obi Wan kind of scared me, but I think if they can just kind of stop with these main character storylines, mm-hmm. that it can get a lot better. Yeah, it's like they they're really trying to force you to like the characters that they're making shows about, and t- until this one, yeah, because like, Andor is not exactly like. I mean, I like him, but he's not a likable guy that much. He's a little bit of a jerk to everybody he talks to. He literally kills the first two people he he talks to in the show. Like, which again, I thought was cool, but like, that doesn't make him a good person. It makes him a bad person. Like, he kills them. And it's like doing something new and exciting. And I'm also very excited for next week. And then also, I wanted to point it out. We mentioned it earlier. the The dude that like, literally kills himself when he leaves that was one of the most like interesting things i've seen in star wars because like the his his friend that he had talked to a few times andor's friend that he had talked to that was like outside doing work like i don't know he like tied some massive hunk of metal to the dude's ship before right before he left and they don't really show him doing that but you know it's him because he was working in that field yeah and when like he leaves, so, like he's clearly doing something. And then after the guy dies, they show him. I literally after. looked at you and said, "Did they just make that guy kill himself?" Yeah, like it like, was sick. Oh gosh, that was awesome. That guy was stupid though. Like, yeah, when something's weighing your ship down that bad, you should probably just stop flying, <laughs> unhook it, and then keep going. Like, yeah. it, I don't get why he was in a rush to leave, anyways. Bro, and I'm curious about the box. Like, what the frick is the box? Oh yeah, I'm interested. And now the box is gone. They couldn't. Yeah, but I'm curious as to what it was. I'm curious to see like what plot's going to be more like relevant in the show. Is it Andor learning about the rebellion and all this stuff, or is it Andor finding his sister? Like, yeah, um, that is how they started. I like, think. I'm so confused as to like, I'm not confused. It's just I don't know which one is going to be more relevant. But either way, I'm, I'm fine excited. with it. Like. Evan, you got you got any thoughts? I know we've been. Well, I mean, I was I was yeah. just thinking about that. I was like, they like the, I the roughly opening line is like, 
have you seen my sister? And they're like, we don't know who that is. And then, like, he kind of explains it. And it seems like he's searching for her. And then they just kind of, like, drop it after he kills the two guards. So, well, he'll find her maybe. If yeah. not, he's going to go on this adventure. So, And, I mean, the box, I mean, all they really described about it was that it was like a – they could detect Empire – stuff but they couldn't detect the box if you have it in your ship or whatever mm -hmm. and i guess it was worth a lot of credits and they're just like well i want to get out of here so i'll sell you the box so but i don't know if it's going to play that big of a role i think it's just how he and luthan yeah uh yeah. like were introduced to each other like luthan just knew everything about andor and obviously bigs had uh, yeah. some bigs had some I'm so intrigued by bigs like yeah, because she when he walked down, she like turned around and ran over and started talking to him. Yeah, like obviously they knew each other as Bix part of the rebellion, and we just don't know it. Is she the one who told Luthan about Andor and all this stuff? Because obviously Andor and Bix are like extremely close and know everything mm -hmm. about each other. Where does Bix time like I don't know? It's just it's all the the characters are just so intriguing in the show. Yeah, Even the like bad the, guys, like I like the robot cool. dude, B2. Mm -hmm. And the uh, Marve, Marva, Marva. Yeah, the woman. Yeah, yeah. I, mom, I really like both of them. Yeah. They were cool. Oh, I man. also really liked how, at this point, I don't know, it, like later in the show, it might change, but they they keep talking about how he's Kanari, I think. Mm -hmm. Kanari. And yeah. Like, but the thing that's important about it isn't that, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe he's Kanari. They're like, some crazy alien race yeah. or something it's literally just like that's his race and that's how they're that's how they know it's him like it doesn't seem like the fact that he's canary is a big deal it's just like i think it's kind of cool that they keep pointing it out and we don't really know if it's important yet but i kind of like that yeah. i kind of like that that's just like a character trait that they can use to pick him out yeah and you mentioned marva the scene where the two guards are like watching her to make sure she doesn't leave while the rest of them are trying to like find Andor, once they pick up his signal, she's like, "There's a reckoning coming," and it's like that yeah. whole scene where it's just her talking and switching back and forth. Oh my gosh, just such like Evan said, such great cinematography in this show, and I'm just excited. Like, this is the most excited I've been for something really in a long time. I think the only thing I can say that I didn't like about episode three was that when everybody was like clanging on the walls or whatever, like. A like their little signals they didn't show the dude with the hammer who was like <laughs> doing the clock tower stuff yeah. why didn't he get to do it he was so good at it i wanted to see him do it a few more times that's not actually an issue i just i thought that was kind of funny i'm curious as to see like what would happen if he didn't wake up early and ring the bell like would the rest of the people in the town wake up would they still be able to go to work could they function it was so funny the first time that he rings the bell like it shows two people leaving a house and then they just like yawn or something to show that they like just woke up. It's like, so this yeah. is their alarm. The second it goes off, they're like, okay, let's start the day. It's like, oh man, I like that dude. Yeah. He's so good at ringing the bell. He is very good at it. It's, a, it's, okay. a, it's his, like, it's his career. He, this is what he dude, does. I wish, I wish that was my job. Just like, <laughs> once an hour. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure he gets paid well too. He looked very comfy. Yeah. He had like yeah. a nice jacket on, and yeah. Ah oh, man, so Evan, if you had to rank this show overall on a scale from one to a hundred, what would your number be? We're doing the one hundred scale of a hundred. Uh, probably high eighties, hitting like the nineties. Uh, but that's really just because, like, the show's not complete yet. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I think upon completion, it could probably hit, like, a 98. Just yeah, because, sure. I mean, I found the first three episodes to be really well done. I mean, if they keep it up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It'll be very I mean, hard for it to pass The Mandalorian in my eyes, but they can make it a yeah. close second. If we're talking TV shows. Yeah, I, I think so. And I mean, it was like I had, I had researched. I found out that the guy who like wrote the story and he's helping direct and he, he did something else. I mean, it's the same guy who did the Jason Bourne uh, trilogy or saga. I don't know how many movies there are. Four, I think. And I mean, those are like spy movies. So it's yeah. like giving it credit. 
And Very I mean, well this done, guy, and, yeah, this guy and the one who was directing, I was like, man, you guys are, for me, you're on like, not quite John Favreau's level because he was yeah. like very, he's he had a little bit of like colorfulness in his story, uh. But like, if you take out that, I think they're on John Favreau's level. With yeah, the it's hard to story. be. It's hard to be John Favreau in anything though. Yeah, he's, he does very well in everything so. he does. I mean, love you, John Favreau. So, Caleb, what is your? After the first three episodes, I. I'm sitting at like a 92, I'd yeah. say. Like, leave leaving room to get better, but there's, I mean, there's also you gotta you just gotta think about it. There's a chance that Disney pulls a Disney and screws another thing up. So yeah, that's true. Um, for me, I'm at like a 94. I want to say just because I was like at an 87 after episodes one and two. Like, I liked the show a lot. It was intriguing. But it just wasn't getting me like crazy excited. And after episode three, I'm crazy excited for next week. So, and episode three being so good made the first two episodes better. But yeah, absolutely. And uh, I'm at it like a 94. Like it could definitely get worse, still get better. But honestly, episode three was just so good. It's hard for me to imagine that it can get better. Yeah. Was, after episode three, because episode three was so like. But I oh hope it does. Gosh. I hope it does too. Hopeful, like, because I think it will. I mean, this show, I don't, there's, rare that a, i don't think a disney plus show will ever hit a perfect 100 for me because even the final season of uh the clone wars the siege of mandalore oh the siege of Man- mandalore yeah the, C- the siege of mandalore itself is perfect it's a 100 out of 100 but you still have eight and other episodes two out of ten yep. yeah. ahsoka plot line and then the like mid bad batch plot. yeah so and the mandalorian 97 98 season one season two 95 96 maybe so very very good um i could see andor ending anywhere between an 80 and a 96 honestly like i hope it gets to 100 i'd love a perfect star wars show i don't think we're gonna get one but we're gonna get a a an amazing star wars show from this and i'm very yeah. excited i'm excited for the finale i don't know how many episodes it is but i can tell the finale is gonna be like insane dude for yeah. sure i'm about to look it up yeah, fine. I out. mean, if it's if it's six, I'd be a little bummed. But at the same time, I, I wouldn't want it, I would I wouldn't want it to go on too far. I if, think it'll be twelve it's, unless it's done like really well. I mean, She Hulk's nine. She Hulk's gonna be like the longest one out. I think. Yeah, but the with She Hulk and Andor, like She Hulk's twenty five minutes with credits, yeah. and then this is like thirty five minutes with credits compared to most things that have been like close to an hour. So yeah. according. To this website, season one is twelve episodes, and they've already confirmed a season two for twelve more episodes. Wow! So I was I was right so on the twelve episodes. Twenty four yes. episodes at least. Season two, though. Oh man! So I'll be whatever happens in season one might not be in the end. Like, yeah, I guess that they're gonna have a cliffhanger. Although honestly, a show like this, I don't, I wouldn't care if they didn't have a cliffhanger. If they just like wrapped everything up and then started a completely yeah. new story in season two, I would be. Yeah, I'm fine with that. The last thing I want to say about the show, because I don't think we've talked about it too much, the acting is incredible. Oh, my goodness. Diego, really? is it Diego Luma? Is that his last name? So. Luna. Luna. L-U-N-A. Yeah. yeah. He's such a good actor. He's an incredible actor. Uh, Luthan, I, the, he's in the MCU. He plays in he's, Thor. I can't yeah, remember his he's name. All the Thor movies. Yeah, he's doing it. This is the best I've seen him act in anything, honestly. Um, The lady who plays Bix, I can't remember her name either. I'm not good with names. She's doing an incredible doing job. Good. Bix Marva's is doing a great Marva's job. doing a great job. Bix's boyfriend's doing a great job. He did a great, well, he's he did a great job. <laughs> even all the even all of the cops are doing the, a great job. The main villain so far, he's doing like, such a good job being like a whiny little boy. Yeah, like like in the great. at the end when they get away on the speeder and then he's just like standing there and the other guard walks up to him and he's like, "We got to get out of here." And he's just like emotionless staring off into the distance like whoa nice i want to rewatch episode three now i get to rewatch it with daniel because we didn't watch it i'm gonna rewatch it with y'all wait for me to get back from work i i need to use uh what shazam when like the the ending little why can't i think of what it's called I'm so dumb. Spoiler? Outro? No, the ending montage of like uh, all the different characters. The song that was playing over that 
was so insanely good. And I love Star Wars music, so I want that song on my playlist. Yeah. I'm a big fan a, of like it was scored very scores. Like, it, the score the score was very cool. good too. Like this there's nothing bad about the show. Doing everything everything's right. great. Everything right. Um also I think tonight we're gonna try to watch Vengeance. So I was about to ask you guys. And Evan really liked it. Plus, well, I did. Each Chris to yeah. watch it. And John Mayer's in it. So that's enough for me. We can watch it. I should be back from work at like yeah. 8 30, probably. I already told Daniel. So he's on board. So yeah, we'll definitely be watching. Nice. Uh, me and Caleb actually just watched Seven yesterday. <laughs> dude, yeah. I was shaking, dude. Ooh. Oh my God. What's in the box? Have, What's have, in the have box? Like, have either of you seen it before? Or, uh, mm. uh, oh, man. Oh, man. Dude. I've heard the ending before, but I forgot it by the time. I hadn't I even heard the I mean, I kind of knew, like, what was in the box. Before when, it was yeah, right when now. the box pulled like, up, I was like. I was like, like oh, my gosh. That's, that's just it. We both were suspecting that Gwyneth Paltrow was the Yeah, killer. we thought that she was the killer. I don't know. Like, obviously, she wasn't. But I literally knew I had watched a video about the movie, and I knew that the guy's name that was like the killer was John Doe or whatever, which yeah. I'm convinced isn't his real name. Like, it was a pseudonym or whatever. But yeah, that's what it. That's what a a John Doe is. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we don't we don't know who this guy John is. is. Like a fake name. That's just yeah, like, a like common yeah. fake name. Whenever we were just... learning how to write checks in a high school class, I took the names were John Doe. Like that's what was the name, but yeah. Seven was really for a good. girl. It's it's uh, Jane Doe. Yeah, but yeah, movie was very good, very creepy, very intense, but very very good. And I, I dude, I was shaking at the end of that movie. I was like, oh my gosh, those are the if I ever become a movie maker, those are the types of movies I want to make. Movies that make people shake. <laughs> That's my goal. Shaking. If the audience isn't shaking, I'm not happy with my performance. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, and. Evan, is there anything you'd like to add? Not that I can think of. GTA 6 got leaked. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm so excited. Not really. I I'm saw some dude that was now. getting like a lot of flack because he used leaked footage in a music video. And so GTA got nice. really mad at him. Or not um, a rock star. But... Speaking on games, there's a new mod for the Spider-Man PC that lets you play in first person, and apparently people who have been playing it, like, it's making them throw up because of how, like, intense it is. Oh, they like the swinging and stuff? Yeah. Like, I could be Spider-Man. Like, I want to try it just so I could feel like Spider-Man, and if I throw up, I throw up. I throw up with pride. Like, I don't have <laughs> This is for PC. you. But, like, I'm just trying to imagine, like, imagine if that was in VR, like, you're playing oh, man. a Spider-Man game, but it's first person. Oh man, that's just close your eyes when you feel sick. That'd be so much fun. But one day in like 2040, we'll have that. One day in 2040, they'll let us like jump off of buildings and catch us to let us be spotted. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's that's my can't business. wait for that's, 2040. That's my bit. That's my when they let us idea. jump off of buildings. Bro, that's my business idea. The Spider Man experience. You get to dress up, we tie you to a harness, you jump from building to building, like. I mean, I would pay for it. Like that? Who wouldn't? Well, actually, I wouldn't pay for it if you were doing it. You'd, you'd give me a free pass. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Next Topic Media isn't making money on YouTube. They're making money on the Spider-Man experience. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's going to wrap up this episode. It was a great one. Go watch Andor if you haven't. Very good. Subscribe to Next Topic Media. Do that. Signing off, I'm Caleb Griffin. I'm Evan Lytle. And I'm guest star Caleb Flagg. Thank you so much for being on the show. (laughs) Thanks for having me. We'll see you guys next week.